You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, who's a candidate for dental implants? With us, we have an expert on the subject, Dr. Chip Castine. Dr. Castine is the director at the Center for Implant Dentistry in Bakersfield. Dr. Castine, welcome back on the program. Glad to be here, Randy. Now, how did you get involved in dentistry, by the way? It's probably an accident. Um, you know, one of the truisms I think about life is you don't get your first brain cell till age 25. Okay. And that's probably correct with myself. I had a degree in human biology and a degree in philosophy, and I didn't know what to do with my time, and I started throwing pots. I became a potter. Is that right? And my potting teacher said, uh, hey, Chip, you know, this in 65 cents is going to get you some coffee, and you got good hands, <laughs> okay. so you need to go be a dentist. And that's So somebody what... told you to be a dentist? Yeah, yeah. And that she, motivated She told me to go check it out, okay. and uh, that was the spark. Let's start with why people lose teeth. People lose teeth usually out of periodontal disease or neglect. Let me show you a few slides of what periodontal disease okay, is. Okay, you brought your laptop. Periodontal disease is a disease of the gum and the bone. And what happens here is there's too many bad bugs around teeth. Okay. And you lose bone. What do you mean bad bugs? Let me show you a picture of what okay. bad bugs is about. That's what we're looking at. What you're looking at is calcified plaque underneath tissue that causes okay. the bone to recede and the tissue to become inflamed. It results in bone loss. Let me show you what bone loss is about, Randy. This is an example of teeth that have typical bone loss around them that have suffered from periodontal disease. So what defines periodontal disease, by the way? Is it a broad spectrum of... Well, what defines it is just loss of vertical bone around teeth. Oh, that's it, okay. And once you lose the bone, I can't say you can't grow it back, but you never grow it back as well as it was, and your best result is pretty compromised. So you lose bone around the teeth, so this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. well, let me just show you what typically happens. On the left slide here shows that you have a healthy tooth, and you go through this process of inflammation and getting things underneath the tissue that are difficult to remove, and the net result is... Uh, a scenario whereby you lose vertical height to bone, the tissue becomes more inflamed and in a chronic state, and eventually you lose the tooth. And the problem with periodontal disease is you don't know you got it. You don't know you got it until the teeth are, or the gums are bleeding a lot or the teeth become mobile, or if you don't frequently go to the dentist and have a checkup, sometimes it bites people. But does this stop with dental implants? I wouldn't say it stops with dental implants, but I'd say dental implants are a solution for this problem okay. in that after you lose your teeth, you have a way of preserving the bone and replacing the teeth. Let me show you what typically happens here, Randy. Okay. You have a situation like this whereby someone has advanced bone loss around their teeth, their gums bleed, they're puffy, they're red, the teeth have spread and they're moving, and you can go in and clean them up. You can surgically go in and repair the tissues. You can't regrow the bone, but you can make their mouth healthy again. And then it looks kind of like this. They're cleaned up, they're much healthier than they were, but the problem is that all too often in a period of three to five years, they go back to their current state. And let me show you what that looks like. This is the scenario. You go through the process of getting healthier, all right, uh, by a surgical process, and you end up losing the teeth anyway. They revert back to the same problems that you had before the surgery. So all too often I would say that Sometimes when people have periodontal disease, the cause of periodontal disease is one of twofold. It's either genetic or it's environmental in okay. the sense that you're not doing the right things for your teeth to make them healthy. Most of my patients either suffer from periodontal disease, neglect, or I, maybe 20% of my patients have just had a tough time with life and they've been addicts and they've destroyed their mouth. Okay. Let me just show you what I mean by neglect and what I deal with pretty much daily and weekly. Now you say you see a lot of mouths that are messes, right? A complete mess. Yeah, here's you turn that around. Yeah, yeah. Here's typical mouth out of. Uh, That's typical. Yeah, yeah. Well, shocking. You know, it's just people. It's just people and their troubles. And uh, that's also common. That doesn't look common. Kind well, of. I mean, what is common to you and what's common to me, I'm sure, are two different things. But certainly, these are the kind of. But these are the kind of things that could be fixed. Yes, uh, we we fix them daily. Just people with catastrophic problems in their mouth. For example, and you know, they're just great people. They're just great people. Here's a guy, Randy, for example. He was so scared to come to the dentist, he just 
he would never come to the dentist, and out of fear, he never sought care. And that looks too far gone. No, it's not. In fact, he cleaned up really nicely, and he had some nice bone around these teeth. It just he never ever wanted to come in, and he was scared. So are there a lot of people like that? I mean, people that are watching this that are in this guy's shoes, yeah, think I'm just too far gone, or it's going to cost too much money to do it. Yeah. What are their fears? What are their hesitations that you hear? I'd say money, pain. That's pretty much it, and. What they don't understand is that we have anesthesiologists that we work with. We can put them to sleep. They don't have to remember okay. or feel anything. Um, for example, look at, look at this gentleman. He's, he's a truck driver. He's, he's in bad shape. He's epoxied his denture together about three times. He's got gross problems. He glued and, his own denture right. together. And this is how he smiles. That's his smile. That's his smile, and he doesn't want to smile, and there's a lot of people out there that feel that way just because they're embarrassed. And they don't know what to do, and they're fearful. Okay. Um, and sooner or later, if they wait too long, it just ends up on my table in a pile that kind of looks like this. Oh, okay? boy. What is that? That's the just a pile out? of extracted teeth. What I want to talk about, Randy, is more than piles of extracted teeth, is the anatomical changes. People don't understand that when they get their teeth out, they think that their life proceeds in a normal way, and it doesn't. They get a sunken face look. I mean, that's after interviewing you the first time, I see it now. Right. The denture wear. Right. The face starts to collapse. Right. Here's why, Randy. The bone fades away. Bone needs teeth to be happy. And if okay. they don't have teeth, it's not happy. Right. And it atrophies. It gets smaller, okay? And it gets significantly smaller. Let me show you a picture here. This man has had a denture for about 35 years. Okay. You can see how his lower chin has come out, his upper lip has caved in. Like a witch. All right. This woman has had a denture for about four weeks. All right. Mm -hmm. They're completely different in profile because they have different bone support holding up these soft tissues. Let me show you something else. Okay. This is typically what happens to a lower jaw over a period of 30 or 35 years after the teeth have taken out. So obviously in this area, the lips are going to be sinking in. Yep. And there's a very little bone support there. The tongue is enlarged. They, they don't have enough foundation to wear a denture, and they're very compromised. Okay, but just they're lucky to eat soft foods. I mean, you either live with a blender or you eat cottage cheese for the rest of your life. Okay. But, so I know where we're going here. The, if you catch these people early enough with dental implants, they're not going to lose that bone. That's right. Is that what you're saying? That's the key, all okay. right? You want to do anything you can not to lose your bone, because once you lost it, it's no fun growing it back. And I'll show you a case where we grow it back for a while. Okay. But the public, do you think they just don't know? I mean, if there's 20 million plus Americans with dentures, do you think they just don't know the option they have with dental implants? They've probably heard about dental implants, but what they don't know is the anatomical changes that go on inside of their mouth after they lose their it makes teeth. makes them look older than they really are. It not only makes them look older, it, it, it incredibly inhibits their ability to but bite sure. with any force. Right. I mean, I can get anyone to look good. Okay. I can't get them to chew good. I mean, I need something to support these prostheses in order to put any force on them. L let, me, let me explain something a little bit further here, Randy. Okay. Look at this slide. This okay. is a man. I took out his lower teeth. I saved two teeth on the bottom so he could snap in his lower dentures. So I have attachments in these cut off lower teeth. But look at the change in bone width here. We got maybe 9 or 12 millimeters of bone around the teeth themselves, but we only have 6 millimeters of bone in between the two teeth. Okay. So he's lost 50, 60 percent of his bone width within maybe a two or three year period of time. That's very normal. Okay. That shot kind of exemplifies the changes that go on real quickly in someone's mouth. This slide here shows how a little bit sunken in her face is, and you can see her hex ray over here. She is uh, severely atrophic in both the upper and lower jaw. She's been rebuilt with dental implants and grafts to her jaws. You can see how her profile has changed. So how has it changed her life, other than she looks better? It changed her life because it changes her diet. Like I say, 60% of nutrition happens in the mouth. And when you can't chew food well, it affects your entire life your choices you make at restaurants, how you chew food at the table, 
all these things, some of them maybe end up being subconscious after a time, but it dramatically affects their life. I mean, I'm telling you again and again, I can make anyone's teeth look good, but it's difficult getting them to function as a normal person.